hello welcome to my table as you can see i'm not in the kitchen at the moment i thought i'd take a few minutes and enjoy a cup of coffee meditate on god's word and visit with you listen thanksgiving is a wonderful time of the year but it can also be a challenging time but we all know along with the holidays comes a little bit of anxiety especially if you're hosting something but it can also be challenging for other reasons i personally love thanksgiving it's a time of reflection for me I'm so thankful for what our Lord did for us, regardless of our circumstances here on this earth. He has made a way for us to spend eternity with Him, and for that, I am and will be eternally thankful. Maybe your Thanksgiving looks a little bit different this year because you've lost someone that you love. We know how that feels. We've lost some family members over the last year and a half, and it's been very challenging. And what I'm choosing to do this Thanksgiving is not think about their absence, but to think that they are in the presence of the Lord and that we will be reunited with them one day. Isn't that wonderful and something that we truly can be thankful for? Now, Thanksgiving can also be a little challenging because it forces us to be maybe around some people that we're not comfortable with. There can be maybe those family members or friends or just whoever that um, you might not enjoy the most. I'm not quite sure how to put that. I'll just let you fill in the idea of what you want that to be. But I wanted to remind you of, of what God's Word says. I love Romans 12. To me, it is the best relationship chapter in the Bible. It talks about how we are to yield ourselves to the Lord first and foremost, and how He's given us gifts and how we share those gifts. And I'm talking about spiritual gifts of encouragement, um, hospitality, teaching, and so on, that we share those with others. That's what God's called us to do. And it also talks about dealing with those that may not be so nice <laughs> because they are out there and hopefully we're not one of those people right but to that I want to share Romans 12 17 with you it's one of my favorite scriptures in the instruction of the Lord and how we deal with people and it says that repay no one evil for evil hey if somebody insults you you know don't insult them back just let it be and have regard for good things in the sight of everyone. If it's possible, as much as it depends on you, as much as it depends on me, live peaceably in the sight of everyone. And that's what God's called us to do, is to be at peace. That's one of the beautiful things that he's given us. I love how the scripture says this, as much as it depends on you. You know, sometimes I wish that that said, as much as it depends on them. If they're nice to me, I'll be nice back. But that's not what the Lord is saying. He's saying to live at peace with everyone. Listen, we know that some people can just be difficult love on them just a little bit more. And if they don't receive it and they just don't want to have anything to do with you, so to speak, then know that our Father is pleased with your efforts. And sometimes that is enough. I want to give you some tips on things that I've learned about hosting a gathering. First of all, Take a deep breath. Just make sure that you spend some time reflecting on God's goodness and the reason why we're all getting together. And in the natural, 
outside of just being in prayer and being thankful, prepare as much as you can ahead of time. Don't be afraid to ask someone for help or ask people to bring a covered dish. I like when someone asks me to bring something. It makes me feel a part of things. Or if someone lets me help in the kitchen, whether it's in preparation of the meal or cleaning up. It just makes me feel good that I can contribute in some way. You know, I have a wonderful, wonderful husband, and I'm so thankful for him, but I was single a lot of years before Jimmy and I met, and I spent a few Thanksgivings by myself. My children were grown, they lived in another state. I lived in Houston, my family lived here in Dothan and in Florida, and it wasn't always convenient to go home for the holidays or to have them come and visit me. And I was so grateful for friends that invited me into their home and made me a part of their gathering. Those are some of the best moments. One that I can remember in particular was Donna Sumrall. She is just a beautiful, beautiful friend. And she knew I was by myself and she invited me over to her house. And we all sat around and we sang songs and uh, her brothers were playing the guitar and singing. And Donna, the food was absolutely wonderful. But I tell you, what I've taken with me all these years was not the food, but the memories of that beautiful, beautiful day in your home. And the sweet potato casserole and mama's dressing and all that stuff, it's great. But at the end of the day, it's the time that we've spent with others. Listen, if you don't have family and friends to gather with, I'm going to encourage you to go serve somewhere. There are so many platforms and venues, I'm sure, in your town or city where you're feeding the homeless or maybe you're just getting to serve. I found in times where I've been by myself and feeling a little blue, the best way to get beyond that feeling is to go help someone, to go serve in some capacity. And if you're homebound, pick up the phone, call someone, be a blessing. Uh, that's what God's called us to be, and that is exactly what you are. I love you. I pray God's blessings upon you. I pray his favor in your life. I pray that um, he comfort you if you're feeling sadness, and I pray that he give you strength in every single capacity. Have a beautiful, beautiful day.